Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today I'll be showing you how to decode this Soviet block four dial combination lock. So let's get into it. I'm always on the lookout for unusual lock designs, those that differ from the ones I can find on the high street. So I was intrigued when I came across this offering on eBay. I don't think this is probably more than 30 years old, despite being listed as a vintage lock, and a little research has shown that earlier versions of this same lock came with brass rather than plastic dials. I suspect that the tolerances here reflect the fact that it's been mass-produced as a low-security solution, but nonetheless, I really like the aesthetics at play here, and I bid for it because I wanted to see how I might go about trying to open it. It did come with a ring of metal secured to the shackle on which the four-digit combination is stamped, but I resisted looking at it initially and began to play. A quick inspection of the lock reveals that there are a series of numbers embossed on each dial. For today, let's call these dials A, B, C and D. Now, strangely, dials A, B and C have the following digits, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9 while dial D inexplicably differs with 024689 being embossed on the turning dial instead. All four of these dials spin relatively freely, and at first I couldn't discern any obvious clicks or significant changes in tension, unlike other combination locks that I've successfully bypassed, and there are no gates to be probed with the decoder tool. All of the locking mechanism is inaccessible, and the shackle can't be shimmed. If we take a look into the shackle cavity, while I manipulate the dials, we can see that there are a series of sliding plates which interact with the notched sections of the shackle holding them in place. And it's only when all four of these dials are correctly aligned that the shackle will be released. I played around with pulling up on the shackle and then turning the dials in the hope that this might help reveal a binding order, but again this seemed to make little difference. And so for a few days I didn't make very much progress, but I did fiddle with it whilst watching television on and off, and I started to notice that there were definite points where some of the dials indicated a subtle build-up and then loosening of tension, but only in relation to the position of neighbouring dials. So, for example, if dial B was in a certain position, A would give discernible feedback, but if I moved B on by a couple of positions, then the feedback for dial A would disappear. So it became clear that I needed to think of this as a set of dials in relationship with one another, rather than four individual mechanisms which would be giving independent feedback. And this was the turning point. Since I've now opened this lock multiple times and I know the combination, I'm going to demonstrate the process I've arrived at by covering the head of each dial with a sticker so that I'm working by feel alone. Now, I'm just going to toggle between each dial, testing for a dial that presents as binding, and when I feel it release, I'm going to advance it by about 10% of its turning arc and then repeat this same process with the remaining dials each time moving back and forth until the next binding dial is revealed. All the while I'm applying light upward tension on the shackle so that when I do arrive at the correct combination I'll know it given that this is not being held under spring tension. Using this method, once all the four dials have been tuned in to the point of least resistance, the lock will either open immediately or will be very close to being opened and it will just be a case of tweaking each dial a little clockwise to bring them into true alignment. Achieving an open with this kind of subtle kinesthetic feedback is then relatively straightforward, but I also want to share a form of visual feedback that I discovered from this experimentation. I've noticed that once two or more of the dials are correctly positioned, the alignment of the remaining dials will result in an easily discernible movement in those already in the open position, and this is most obviously the case when the final dial is being manipulated. So note here, as I move dial D back and forward from the correct position, A, B and C shift to the left or to the right or up and down. All of this dial manipulation feels a little bit like tuning in a radio station until you get a nice clear signal without static. So this lock has some pretty obvious and exploitable design flaws, but given that it was originally sold for less than two rubles, it was never meant to offer high-end security. 
and I'm happy that I found a way to crack open this Kodovoy Zamok or combination lock. If you are Russian or speak Russian, I apologise for my pronunciation. So hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching and until next time, take good care.